Good night, fellow punters. Isn't that a coincidence? The clock on the wall is exactly 10 o'clock again. Big Ben is banging in the distance. Back with a look at both cards from uh, Good Friday. Lingfield has a good set up tomorrow and the all weather finals are on in Newcastle. Uh, so you can pick and choose what you want. I'm sure um, you'll be looking at other videos and reading other opinions or whatever so do what you want as they say i went through a lot uh, the last few hours and again last night a lot of videos and a lot of research so hopefully it'll pay off and it could be one of those days like today where you could have picked the wrong one we shortlisted a couple of last night and we chose the wrong one in, a, in two races today um but no luck um that's what you call them. Yes, day drifted out and uh, out to twelve to one early in the day, and then it came back in. I think it went off sixes or sevens, um. But it had wind surgery, so I think they better go back to whoever performed that operation and get a refund and go and do it again. Um, he fell out the back of my television anyway, so things aren't right with him. Um, the other one. Same profile as the winner, a former hurdler, but went for the wrong one, of course. Um, Tom Queeley doesn't ride that many, and he's good at the at the long distance races. So anyway, uh, oh, before I go on, uh, shout out to Ninja Squirrel. Um, I said last night, Paddy McElhinney, and I didn't know where he was. He said he is in Jaro. And the first thing that came to mind when I read the word Jarrow this morning was My name is Little Alan Price, the Jarrow song. So it must be down in Geordieland, uh, East Anglia, is it? I'm not too sure of the geography of England. Bill Saunders is in County Durham. Uh, John, in, John Honeyford. Uh, best look to Davy Cairns as well. He's getting his uh, going through a second chemo. He's suffering from uh, cancer. So the best look to him and good health. John Gaffney, a newcomer as well, and I'm not sure whether I said Andy C, but I copped it again uh, because I used to have an uncle, Andy C. Uh, he's a few years dead now, but I sent him a Christmas card and I used to put down Mickey D and he used to send one back to me and put down Andy C. So that's what I was thinking of this morning. Anyway, on to tomorrow. I go, I go through Lingfield first. Uh, there's an apprentice race first over a mile and a half. Hard to know. Um, I went with yards and forum, and yet our horses that I thought was aimed particularly at the race, and yards and different things. And I came up with for this race. Uh, isn't that the one? Oh yes, where are we? I'm either. Would that be it? No, I've more runners. I come up with the Andrew Balding, Callum Hutchinson ridden Eleanor Cross. It's zero for seven, but it's owned by Cheverly Park. It's an each way bet. It's around 10 or 12 to 1. But it has um, a few runs at the track. Uh, it was second. Well, if we look at this one, uh, it had three runs there together, but this is the course and distance, and it's only beaten by a nose that day. And you, the horse might have thought it had won actually because it was that close. Heading towards the top of the home straight, Birthday Angel joined by Caustic. Eleanor Cross now ridden along in third. They're getting away from La Tigue and then came Fit the Spitfire Bridge. Inside the final furlong, Eleanor Cross tries to get on turns with Caustic. He now kicks her home. Birthday Angel now back in third. Eleanor Cross level with Caustic. These two to fight it out. Eleanor Cross coming home a little bit better. With on the inside, Caustic battling away all the way to the line to hit the lights close. Caustic and Eleanor Cross. There's not much in it. Back in third was La Tigue. As the fellow used to say years ago, nothing in it like my pocket. But it's well bred as well. It's um uh 
It's a half sister. No, it's a full sister to uh, Making Miracles and also to Earlswood. Um, so it's an ounce of breeding is worth more than a ton of feeding. That's the selection tomorrow. Let's check on the prices. Balding is going fairly well. Ten to one shot there, they're paying five places. It's five to one the field. Two oh five is a middle distance championship. Thirty three thousand sterling to the winner. Uh Asgard's captain is favourite, but I I don't think it has ran in Lingfield. Forgive me if I make a few errors or mistakes now because my mind is my mind is absolutely chocker blocked this evening. Yeah, it hasn't ran at Lingfield. Or well, it had it had ran badly actually in an amateur handicap. That's why I sort of left that out. But a horse that w went well on the surface and it ran green. And I think it was more in the tank. It beat that as Spiritus who's back against it tomorrow. But keep an eye on this. Uh, Brandon Wilkie was on it. Um... Well, it it that's it so out in front. In by Abu Royal as they take the turn. Then up the inside, Arcadia Knight just being nudged along as well. Then right round the outside, Tribal Wisdom coming the scenic route. They've swung for home. Bystanders just about gone on here to Abu Royal. Then Inspiritus towards the or between the pair of them as they make their way down towards the final furlong. Loyal Touch seems to have cried enough as they go now towards the closing stages. And out in front is Bystander, but hanging. Inspiritus is backing back, battling back with Abu Royal as well, but racing up towards the line. Bystander it was a little bit errant in the closing stages. That was off 80. I thought he wasn't snugging off there. Um, lightly raced. Two for three on the goo. Top six pound for that. Lightly raced. That's the selection of that race. It's an each way play as well. Uh, at um, six to one there. The 240 is the mile race. Another 33,500 to the winner. Um, oh yes, I'm, I'm taking a shot here at Valdemiro. We backed him before. We didn't back him at this trip. If you look at it, all his races lately was at six furlongs and seven furlongs. And we have to go back a long time to, and it was fairly competitive, which is in the high, high 80s, low 90s at a mile. And it won over a mile two one time. So I just thought that he's aiming it for this race. There was other races he could go for between the two meetings tomorrow. And that we give it a shot with Jason Watson on it. Uh, 10 to 1, shot 11 to 1 there in places. Four places up for grabs. Again, it's an open affair. Uh, well, 2 to 1 on the field. Tom Quill, he had a winner today. Cephalus. It's for Gary Moore. Oh, yeah, he, had, he won... Uh, when he was with Charlie Hills, he won off 62 up to 73, four in a row. Then he changed stables and he went back down again from 75 down to 57 and he won. He's up to 75. So whether the handicapper has got him or not now is another thing. Won the last day again, all right. But uh, I was putting the safety net out and going for Baldomero each way. The 315... is the marathon 40 yards short of two mile what did i pick here i went with bascule for richard hughes looks like has been targeted for the race Hughesy is going well. He's 5 for 10 in the last 14 days. That's 
But if you look, first time out last year, uh, the 1st of April, in a class 2 at 2 mile, it was third to Bandinelli. Bandinelli is a very decent horse um, from Godolphins. So it hadn't ran from a maiden hurdle, we say, in January. And it hadn't ran on the flat since the previous December, when it was fourth to Pondelius in the and it went off favour for that for the two mile uh, final. Um it was fourth twice there in December and January, and then the last day in Kimpton, uh it wasn't off he aired. Uh I'm just thinking that this was this is the FA Cup final for it. Restless installed slowly into stride, held up in fifth, headway Went second inside until ridden and he lost second and handbrake was pulled up and uh, four places as well. That's the selection there. On to the sprint. Uh, Johnny Murta has the favourite there. And James Doyle. It's interesting, James Doyle, that he's riding in in, uh, in Lingfield and not in Newcastle. We have our old buddy there, but he seems to be going off the boil a bit, Alligator Alley, and it's drawn in 12 as well, and it's better at 5 than at 6, and it's a long time ago since it ran at 6 furlongs. Apache Outlaw 1 in Dundalk for Edo McGuinness. Um, I picked Bosch. For Richard Hannon. Hannon isn't flying at this far uh, in flying form, but there was a race the last of that caught my eye in Wolverhampton over six. Uh Nebworth was seven and second and that's one since last Saturday. Um it comes up on the rail and it sort of gets sort of intimidated a bit. towards the rear of the field as they begin to make the turn in. So too is Al Baris, who's still out the back of the pack. And so too on the outside is Alazwa, exiting down towards the final furlong. Commander Straker, taken on by Bosch against the near side rail. And now Ferris goes on. It's Ferris the Grey, who strikes with another 100 yards to go. Ferris and David Probert in front. Ferris wins. Tight second between Nebworth and Bosch. Also close for fourth between... Bal that Baldemiro wasn't that race as well. That was a decent enough old sprint there. Um, what price is it? Where do we check? Six to one. Another each way. But, um, Shane Foley is riding Prince of Zinden. That won a couple of times in Newcastle, wasn't it? Newcastle and Lingfield ran well enough there in, in, in against the Caltonian. It's gone up a few pounds for that. Bosch is the selection. On to the 4.25. Of a long shot here. The one the second Second from last in the betting, Granary Queen. She hiding on us? No. I hope she's not hiding tomorrow. The reason for this is it ran in this race last year on the 7th of April. It was third to spring promise of 74 and it hadn't ran from the 14th of December we'll have a look at it in a second fast forward to this year it hasn't ran since the 23rd of December and it's off 72 and George Adobe takes off 3 pounds so it's actually running off 69 tomorrow but let's have a look at how it ran last year comes with a mighty run uh, it's back a long way now when we pick it up. 
Valentinka on the right, the green Miss Bella Brown with the white face, his spring promise, incrimination behind those amber dew staying on. That's it here. They're still to get to this front pair. Miss Bella Brown, here comes spring promise, incrimination, the light blue centre court behind these. Spring promise trying to get through, incrimination coming with a granary queen flying. Spring promise, incrimination, granary queen, very tight behind those to centre court and then Miss Bella Brown and say if you... I had it on the wrong horse, I had Watch it again. Make sure. Valentinka on the right, the green Miss Bella Brown with the white face. Is it back His here? spring promise, incrimination behind those amber dew staying on. They still to get to this front pair. Miss Bella Brown, here comes spring promise, incrimination, the light blue centre court behind these. Spring promise trying to get through, incrimination coming with a granary queen flying. Spring promise, incrimination, granary queen, very tight behind those to centre court and then Miss Bella Brown and... She came from a long way back last year. Last year she was drawn in 13. That was the reason. Uh, where is it drawn this year? Drawn in three. So hopefully get better position. And the trainer is in forum. She had a winner there this evening. But her last five runners, she has had two winners and three places. So on fire, you could say. So hopefully at 20 to 1, it'll give us a, get a place for us anyway tomorrow. Um, on to the last one. Went for a 12 to 1 shot there. Aiden and Abetton. James Doyle hangs about. For Richard Spencer and he's going fairly well he's uh, 5 for 11 in the last 14 days that's 45 and a half percent lightly raced and went off favourite or second favourite in Kempton and decent enough race there's a good pot here tomorrow and it looks like it has been targeted for the race the same thing could be said for Pandora's Gift but at I'd rather go for the 12 to 1 that I was looking at there than the 2 to 1. As short Williams hasn't had a winner in the last 14 days. It did win the last twice at Sutherland and uh, looks like it has been targeted for the race as well. But anyway, went for an each way play there with um, Aidan and Nabet and James Doyle. On to Newcastle. Newcastle on Tyne. First one is the, the Borodon Stakes. There's great racing there tomorrow. Now, now you know, well, draw is important and look is more important in Newcastle. Silent Age is um, for Godolphin. Um, has won two races and now it won them fairly well, all right, but I'm, I'm against it. I'm going with room service. Room service won the big sales race in Doncaster. Hosed up. Uh, now, it was only racing 89 at the time. It's gone up to 102. We went up £13. Pound. But it won fairly well to suggest at the six and a half furlongs that the step up to a mile tomorrow on this surface, I think, will suit. It's also entered in the Irish 2000 guineas, I see, that has a, an entry. He's on the very far side of the field. Digs very deep. Mind the yellow you, sleeves. So will Dragon Leader over on the far on side. The very right. Still giving it everything. Dragon Leader, the overall leader. Room service coming hard now. Johannes Brahms this side. Lambert joining in. Soldier's Gold is right there as well. And now it's Room Service who's come through to hit the front. Johannes Brahms chasing with Dragon Leader. Both in behind. Room Service pulling out more than enough. Room Service delivered to the door beautifully. Hopefully there's room service tomorrow night upstairs on the bus. That's the selection in the first race. Uh, as I said, it's... Entered in the one 2,000 guineas in the Cora. It's not entered in English. 
Arn is carrying a five pound penalty for winning a group race last year. It's raised at one pound less. Uh, I think that has entries as well. That's in English, two thousand guineas. Onto the marathon. Fifty six yards more than two miles. Of an old horse in there, got his money for it too because it was six to one earlier. Um, Palace Boy had done a good turn for us a couple of times, and it was beaten by Spartan Army the last day. But I don't think it acted on the surface as well um, as it might act on it here. That was in Southall. Um, it had won twice in Wolverhampton. When you look back at when it ran on the turf like it ran in the uh, Supreme last year uh, behind Marie National and Lucci in a listed hurl and then they put it uh, put it on the flat now, it wouldn't have been the trip because it, it, it would have stayed but I, I, I think it was the surface um, that day and Spartan Army has come out and won since but we're at it we're getting a few pounds um, Arto still on the rail, then swinging London, out the back end, evaluation, Ethan, and also Sir Chauvelin. Flattening on in, two and a half furlongs to go, King Victor, he's trying to wind up the gallop here and fend off the challengers. To the left, Spartan Army has travelled up well, Palace Boy is under pressure to the right, there followed by a ward dancer. From the back end, Educator starts to try and pick up, swinging London, first Emperor, still plenty of chances in behind, but will they get past this front three? They've been that way throughout, it's Spartan Army. Army over Palace Boy, driving close home, Spartan Army is finding more. Spartan Army goes back to back. I didn't pick there, he was 6-1 to one earlier when I was in the run half five. There's money for there now. Uh, a horse that should run well as well as uh, tomorrow is, is Tyson Fury. The step up and trip the last day at Dundalk, it hosed up, but it only beat Impero and we know all about Impero. We backed him a few times and couldn't win for us. Um, but it had a good run, a uh, ten and a half furlongs to Elegant Man. Um, before that, and the 16 furlongs, the two mile, the distance seemed to suit it better than the 12 of before. I wouldn't put off anybody having a few quid each way on Tyson Fury. Uh, Sean Bone has taken off five as well. On to the 2.25. The three year old championship. This is the sprint. Yeah, this is a great little race. Now, look a bit desperate, important in this race. Um, that Blue Prince is a great turn of foot. Fire Demon uh, train for the race. I'm going for the top weight actually. I'm going for Smellier for Marco Bassi. Now it, it got it got beaten by uh, Blue Prince. Blue Prince comes from an outrageous bad position on the rail to kill him on the line. But I think he got a bit tired as well. Uh, hopefully be a bit sharper Still there tomorrow. The running rail sommelier being produced now by Marco Ghiani and wider sommelier's Havana as they head down towards the last furlong. Sommelier Havana loaded gun Neapolitan Brave Empire with work to do. Sommelier and Havana, these two duel for the lead and Sommelier's now pulling out a little bit more. Look at Blue Prince flying home to the near side and Blue Prince has mugged Sommelier. That day, Sommelier was given... Uh, Eleven pound away. I think it's four pound tomorrow, isn't it? Seven pound. So four pound of a difference. That should be. Fire Demon is a decent harsh as well. Uh, for Judmont. Oshin Murphy, he'd be mad to get. Uh, hasn't ran in, in, on the surface and it got 
beaten uh, by uh, in Lingfield. And I know about the race in that one beaten media shooter. I'm on the top weight anyway. I would just check the prices. Or did we check them? I might have. 7 to 2, 3 to 1. Phillies and mares. 7 furlongs. I think this is all about 9 tenths. We back to we back to the day it was second to shades of summer and that day it gave shades of summer 20 pounds and with jack Enright's uh seven pounds tomorrow or seven pound claim tomorrow there's only five pounds in it so that's 15 pounds of a difference and we were awful lucky this day i think even though we were given a 20 pound it got sorted back at the back of the pack and it's the other horse sort of brought us to our left on the way up the stretch. Side, wild side. We're, We're in the brown at the Miss back Bellabrand there. Dropping away. Nine tenths has got a bit of work Here. to do. Shades of Summer takes over. A furlong and a half left to go. Back in second is Marquis de Mantenon. Nine tenths is in the clear. Wild side is running on. Well inside the final furlong. The one to get to is Shades of Summer. Leads by about two lengths to nine tenths in second place. And it is Shades of Summer who will not be denied. There was a bit of support. Shades of Summer beats nine tenths. In behind those two, Wild Side. The big change in weight uh, should be suitable for him to turn the tables, I would say. Um, that's, I think that's the only favourite I've picked, is it? On to the Sprint handicap. We have a horse in here that done us a good turn the last day. Uh, cover up. It was fives earlier, so there is a bit of money for it. The only thing about it is the last two runs are, and wins were both over five furlongs over the trip and of 83 and 88. And it's gone up from 88 up to 101. So that was £13 of a hike. I did say the last day before this race, if he ran the race in about 58 seconds, he'd probably win. And he did win it, run it in 58. But he had a lighter weight on his back. throws down a challenge. Cover up's less than a length behind him on the right, beginning its move now. Followed through with the far side by Moonflight with the nose banders. Cover up has quickly got into the lead here by two lengths inside the last furlong. Pockley, Moonflight, Exalted Angel giving chase, but chase is all they will do. Cover up very easy indeed. Uh, second is going to be very tight. The nose banded. Um. Now it has won over six before. It won in Lingfield over six. But this is a better class race. Um, like he was winning this off 76. It's New Hope Bullet flattening for the judge here and up top cover up has quickened right away. Cover up went clear by four around the turn. Alamine is chasing in second, changed things in third, then Count Otto inside the furlong. Cover up with Alamine chasing hard, but cover up too good. Cover An improved little sprint, and now there's lots. Batal Dubai, we backed that a couple of times. Um, Al Bashir has top weight, 5,000 to 1. Um, Coachello, like it's not going to be simple tomorrow, but um, I had down each way bet earlier, which was 5 to 1. It's a win bet now. Uh, both hearts, so hopefully it can, uh, it can be competitive. On to the penultimate race. We have a mile two. What are you at? The favourite in this is... What the fuck? Penzance. And also grand. I was impressed with Elegant Man in Dundalk. It's owned by Amor Racing. Fierce Well Bred 
it's by um, Arrogate. So it's bred for the goo. That he was a uh, horse of the year and won the Breeders' Cup Classic. I think it's the third foal. The other one, Todd Pletcher is training one, uh, one sibling in England and the other one is in Japan. But it won first time out in Dundalk last October. Then it went over to a listed race in England, in Kempton. And it was second to Rebels Romance. And Rebels Romance, five-year-old, is a former Breeders' Cup winner. It won in... Uh, Keeneland in November 2022 with Bet Stone Age. So like that that was a good run and that has won since in Doha as well. So that was a good run. It's likely raced and then the last time it ran in Dundalk. That's it in the ammo colours there on the left hand Escape side. With the white face, elegant man towards the left. San Andreas still there in the centre of the track and there are a few lengths in front of Tyson Fury and Star Harbour as they head onto the furlong pole. An elegant man has taken over towards the near side leads, goes on from Freescape, behind him San Andreas over on the inside trying to stay on Tyson Fury but elegant man is stretching away, is going to win in style for Adrian Murray and Mikey Sheehy from in second. That was an impressive enough and when you consider that El our, um, Tyson Fury came out and hosed up the, left, the next time I will have a guide to that form earlier. It's a six to one shot with uh, William Hill there now. Uh, that's a great each way bet. We're playing four places at six to one. And even at five to one, let to do with short there with um, three, six, five at four. But it'll, it'll probably drift out in the morning. Um, there's a, a horse hooking. Keep an eye on the way that runs as well in that race, even though it's a big price, because we have a horse running in the next one. That uh, just it's cross form. Keep an eye on that. It's stepping up in trip. Um, also, Grand is won the last day uh, for Christopher, but he, he's not flying like he normally is. Um, and he went up nine pound for that win. Uh, I prefer. I'd be fairly, I'd be fairly strong on that each way. If we get 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 six to one there, or five to eleven to two, have a strong each way bet on it. I think um, the surface should be okay out by uh, Arrogate. And then on to the last one. This is a tricky race. Well, no, they're all tricky, of course. But dear my friend, this horse won on the card last year. It won the three-year-old race. It went on then. It ran in the... the um, ran in York. What the, the one in uh, York? The Dante. And it ran in the Epsom Derby. It ran in the Hampton Court. Uh, worst was getting. So wind surgery, a good break. And it came back then. And it's two for two at Newcastle. And it's four for four in total for the... Uh, on the goo. We'll just look at it here at a mile in Newcastle. This was when it was 90, of 97. Now it beats uh, Symbol of Light. And Symbol of Light is up against him tomorrow and has been targeted by Julie Camacho for this race and is getting a big pull on the weights. But this, look at the size of this horse, the huge Looking horse. For a nice bit of That's in the middle of Park, but can't get out. It. Hell Rock coming with a run. Another one towards the far side with an effort. Now is Chuzzle Witch. Rope Power's looking for a gap. Fantastic Fox off the pace. Tempest the leader. Dear My Friend now has the door open to the near side. And it's Dear My Friend who's quickening on from Fantastic Fox. Symbol of Light is running on too late. Dear My Friend has won. Got the gap when required. Symbol of... Huge horse. I think that's, I think it was gelded as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was gelded and had a, but this was the last day in uh, Lingfield. It was in a handicap of 107. 
ambles into the lead. Goes on by a couple of lengths to McLean House in second. Then Dingland Lorado appears to have hoisted the white flag. Then trip to Rome and the rest. Down towards the final furlong they come. Dear my friend, beautifully positioned throughout. Now goes on by a couple of lengths. McLean House tries, he might, can't catch him. Then trip to Rome and Kingdom come. But racing up towards the line. Dear my friend is in a purple patch of form at the moment and wins again. It's not going to be easy though to win off top ways. He's carrying 12 stone one. Or 12 stone. 10 stone one, isn't it? 10 stone one. I think a good each way bet on it is the French horse. Fast Raj. That's why I was saying to keep an eye on hooking in the previous run. Previous race. Because hooking was behind this two runs back. Or hooking betted. But the last day. It turned the form round on Wally. Handy enough. This is over seven, and I think it'd be better at a mile. Far side, Bray Sky. Here comes the favourite, Fast Raj. Fast Raj has moved up on the outside of Bray Sky, and he's starting to come away in the last little bit. Fast Raj, too good, has won it. Photo second or third, Wally on the outside. The only thing about it, it has never ran at a straight mile, um, or a straight course uh, like this. So... It should be all right. Kingdom Come won a great turn of foot the last day as well. But I think uh, something tells me that that French horse is going to be competitive tomorrow at 7 to 1. They're paying four places. Um, but th th that big horse will be able to carry the weight. 4 for 4, 2 for 2 at the track. Um, Someone asked a question there about uh, the uh, the Florida Derby's on the weekend. That I'll I'll have a, I've had a look at that last night, the middle of the night. We'll we'll have a selection in it. Um, I get this into the oven. Um, talking a good while. So, uh, bash the bookies over and out. <laughs>